Hello, Julian Davis here again. Welcome back to my kitchen here in Julian's restaurant in the UK. Today, I'm challenging, challenging myself. I'm going to do you um, the most delectable chocolate pud. It's called chocolate fondant pudding. My recipe, lots of pitfalls, but we'll go through the pitfalls and hopefully we won't stumble on the way. First things we need are the ingredients, the utensils and the ingredients. So we start with 10 fresh eggs. A measured amount of sugar, it was about 150 gram of sugar. 250 grams of really good quality dark chocolate. That's actually um, a Belgian chocolate, 70% cocoa. 250 grams of cubed butter. 40 grams of flour, plain flour, has to be plain flour. I'll explain to you later why. And a bit of booze. There's always a bit of booze. So what we have here is a, um, a, a reasonably good uh, dark rum. Having got the ingredients together, we then need a spatula, a balloon whisk. Like most jobs, we get all our bits and pieces together, like I may have mentioned in previous videos, um, so that we don't stumble, we don't have to start, suddenly stop and start looking for stuff. This particular recipe is more so important because there's the timing element. We're going to melt the chocolate. Watch this. Basin. See? I'm not ready. I haven't got my basin. There we go. Basin. Chocolate. Butter. Measured amount of butter. And a sensible... Whoops. Of rum. Now that will just put it on directly on the heat. It's just a bit of boiling water there, creating some steam. And that will melt slowly. Okay, we'll come back to that in about 10 minutes time. That'll have melted and we'll just whisk it in and blend it so it's a nice smooth chocolate. Meanwhile, back to the second basin and we have to separate and we have whole eggs and separate eggs. So, so there's going to be five whole eggs. That's the easy bit, says he. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, the next bit, we just want the yolk, the yolk and not the white. So, similar, crack, rip the top off, there's no, no, there's no finesse here, there's no fancy gadgets, fingers. Just let them run through, nice fresh thick white there, tells you the egg is fresh. Five times. The other thing, by doing it this way, if there's any blemishes or if the yolk is actually broken, you've got control before you put it into the mix. Because these egg whites, obviously... I can use for another recipe another time. Meringues, Italian meringues and hard baked meringues. We'll do those later. Right, so get this going. Pop up in there. You can't beat a bit of mess. You can't make an omelette without cracking an egg, they say. We'll do omelettes another time. Okay, so what's that complete? Good. Measured amount of sugar, straight in, and a wee bit of patience while the chocolate melts and we'll start cooking the eggs over hot water. Chocolate and the butter will blend in together. So, while we're waiting for that, follow me to the next table and on here we have the basins that these puddings are going to go into. Now, okay I started, there's a few pre-done pre ones there. Little hint, little trick, if you're going to be brave enough to try this at home. A Dario mould. I actually keep that Dario mould in the fridge. It's clean, but it's kept in the fridge so it's ice cold. And while we're, what we do is some melted butter in there. Melted butter in there all the way around. And because it's ice cold, the butter sticks to the wall. If, it was, if, the, if the basin was hot, it would just sink to the bottom. And then, no, not too many frills here, a little bit of greaseproof paper at the bottom. That protects the pudding when it's baking later on. Put a bit more butter, and then we'll put these in the fridge to set, ready for the finished article. Back to the chocolate. Yes, won't be long now. Won't be long now. Right, chocolate's melted. That's ready for the uh, the mixing. The eggs and the sugar are ready to go on the hot uh, on the, over the hot water, and we're going to cook that to a nice creamy ribbon and the measured amount of flour. 
talking you through this now the pitfalls as you whisk it's quite a vigorous whisking if you tend to go slow the uh, egg is going to start to to scramble and you're going to end up with lumps no good so you've got to be vigorous there's a bit of pain involved here but there's a smile at the end of the product because it tastes amazing when we serve this in the restaurant i listen for all the u's and the r's hopefully so the first thing is severe whisking and as you're whisking you're going to be aerating the eggs we're going to be moving in a motion of such way big, big sweeping motions and as you whisk you're, you're frothing up so the frothing up around the side of the wall will start to coagulate very quickly so you've got to keep moving it it's, it's about a two or three minute operation but it's painful but it's worth it okay the next stage once we've got that egg cooked to a ribbon or in the trade we call it a sabio nice and creamy and thick you take it off the heat you add the chocolate within about 20 seconds you've got to get the chocolate and the flour into that mix and whisk it together bear in mind this stainless steel basin will be hot still it'll still be cooking the chocolate we wanted to set the flour will be working against you because it wants to thicken so all the elements are working against you so the speed is of an essence if you get it right first time, I won't believe you, but have a go and try and try. And eventually, if you get the perfect pudding, it's so well worth it. But finally, once you've got the mix in there, you get them into the Dariel basins, which we should, you saw earlier, and we set them in the fridge, put them in the fridge for three or four hours for the whole pudding to set. And then we bake. And now it's over the hot water and we're whisking like crazy. It's all gloopy to start with. It. Off the heat, in with the chocolate, this is the speed, now get the spatula, all, every little bit of chocolate in there, and you're counting down 20 seconds, I don't know how many, I've got severe whiskey, see how nice and thick that is, chocolate starts to set, in with the flour, oh, lovely, lovely. Right, there we go, and we're, and we're off, into the basins, lovely river of chocolate, beautiful, up to the top. Okay, we don't stop pouring, you notice it's just overlap, make that mess, doesn't really matter. Get them in there. Oh yes, excuse me. Oh, a bit of spub on the edge there, that doesn't really matter. Okay, we might just get a little one there, which my darling wife can taste for me later. Not that she likes chocolate. Do you, Jackie? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, very good, well done. Well, self-praise is no recommendation, but in this case, I think there's an exception. Voila. Okay, so we've got two, four, six, seven and three quarters. That's not bad. It does yield eight. Now we'll put that in the fridge now for several hours and um, join me later when we cook and eat. Bye for now. Pudding's been in for two or three hours, ice cold. The texture is like firm butter. Okay, now the whole point of this now, it goes into the preheated oven and as the, the, the sponge forms on the outside and permeates the heat permeates through to the core, it melts the middle. So the idea is that we cook it for 12 minutes 12 minutes allows that sponge to be firm enough to hold on its own, but leave a liquid centre. Okay, we'll put that on a tray, the oven's already preheated. We'll give it 12 minutes. I always use, I use a timer for this because I'm doing other jobs in the kitchen, so this that's a vital bit of kit for me. So in 12 minutes time, hopefully we'll be on cloud nine. Okay. Right, we've just, just over a minute before the pudding comes out, so... I'll show you a few little hints, a little few snippets and tippets of how to dress a plate, how to show a presentation, how to enhance the whole thing. So if you look down here, a simple plate with a bit of a pattern and a few coolies. There's a chocolate sauce here. Now you can see a little bit of a, a play around. You don't have any rules here, we just have a little play. And if you want a little bit of colour, we'll put some mango in there. And then, and then we'll see what happens. We'll feather it. Just feather it. Just wait that way, okay. Anything like that, just to give it a bit of colour. Um, now a little quick trick. If you're going to put ice cream onto a plate, 
and it's going to slide. And we've got it from the restaurant to the customer, we want it perfect. So, here's a little trick, we'll put a little bit of icing sugar on there, ready for the ice cream, and that'll just stop it sliding. Albeit for a few moments, but it's enough to get, to get it to the table. This ice cream I'm using is licorice and blackcurrant. It's gorgeous, goes lovely with the chocolate. There we go. And any second now, the buzzer. Oh, there we go. There we go. There's the buzzer. Off we go. 12 minutes. Out comes the pudding. Out comes the pud. A little bit of excess butter there. That's just from the um, from the edge of the basin where we where we were uh, lubing it. Okay. Now then, a little gadget. A little gadget is a palette knife like this. I'm just going to loosen the sides. Okay, just loosen the sides like that. If you haven't got a knife like this, just a table knife, anything like that. That's not too sharp. Not going to dig in. See, all the hard work's done. All the Tricky bits done. Hopefully, we'll just turn this out now very, very quickly. Little prayer. Well, uh, take the top off. Right, where's my, where's my spoon, Jackie? Can I borrow your spoon, my love? Is that your spoon, Jackie? <laughs> typical, typical. No. Here we go. A little bit of. Um, Fluffle, fluffle, and now we dig in. Let's have a little look. Oh, wow. Doesn't that look lovely? Okay, let me have a little taste. This is the this is the best part of the job. A little bit of ice cream. Come on, come on, come on, come on. A little bit of ice cream. Oh. I love this job. You must come over. Come and get a table booked. Come and taste this. It's to die for. Bon appetit. Okay.